What's going on guys? Common Lot Snow here, and today I thought I'd show you the easiest way to install Arch Linux in a virtual box with the BIOS install. Now, the steps for this will work if you're doing a BIOS install on Metal, so there's nothing to be worried about there. This is the easiest Arch install on YouTube. I, I, I promise, uh, 100%, not really. But I know for a lot of people, especially newcomers to Linux, installing Arch seems to be one of those things that you can never wrap your head around. Believe me, I've been there. I spent months trying to grasp how to install Arch, never mind understanding the steps behind it. But eventually, I got my head around it. If I can do it, you can definitely do it. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to be using Oracle VirtualBox for this. Uh, if you don't have that installed, it's literally the easiest thing in the world. I will be following the steps on the Arch Wiki, and I'll also put in a few of my own steps to get a fully functioning Arch Linux distro. So yeah, let's get into it. Like I say, this is going to be a very basic Arch install. So we want to click on New up here. Name your virtual box, just call mine Arch02. Already selects our version here. Next, I'm going to allot it uh, four gigs of RAM. That should be absolutely plenty. Uh, create a virtual hard disk, virtual box disk image. Um, dynamically allocated and fixed size. Dynamically allocated basically means it uses as much storage as it needs up to up until a set point. Uh, and fixed storage is a bit quicker, but it takes up that allotted amount of space instantly and. I do believe it's harder to upgrade it to increase the amount of storage, but don't quote me on that. So I think we'll give it, I think we'll give it uh, 20 gigs. I think 20 gigs should be plenty, especially for what we're doing. Uh, then we can go into settings up here, go to system. We want to deselect floppy, put that down here, and then select hard disk and put that as a first boot order. So when we first boot into the Arch ISO, it will skip the hard disk because there's nothing on it, and then it'll boot from the AE optical. And when we finish our install, it will automatically reboot with the hard disk selected. So there's no need to go back into this window to change this. Click on processor tab. We'll allot it two cores out of the four cores and eight threads we have here. Um, you never want to, to give it more than the green. And I always think it's safe to allot it half of the green because VirtualBox sees your physical core, uh, sorry, sees your, your virtual cores as physical cores. So my processor only has four physical cores, but here it says it's eight. So if we did allot it four, our system will be left with no cores. So we don't want that. If we come display here, we'll give it 120 megs of video memory, and we will also select uh, VBox VGA. Now this normally would full screen our little uh, window for our virtual box, but in the install, you can't full screen that. So we're gonna click on storage here, Click on empty IDE, I'm going to click on here, choose our disk file, and then what you're going to need to do is navigate to your ISO files. So I have mine selected there, and that should be it. So we'll click OK, and start the virtual box. Like I say, this is a BIOS install, so if you're looking for a UEFI install, I may do one in the future, but there are a couple online which you can check out. I do recommend DistroTube's um, video on a UEFI Arch install. But I also recommend watching other people to do Arch installs anyway, as it seems everybody does it a little differently. So you'll get a good grasp of what you should do. Now, we're booted into the Arch ISO. Uh, we are not going to set a keyboard layout, as the US one will work just fine. But if you do, you can follow the instructions on the, on the Arch Wiki. We know we're booted into a BIOS, so we don't need to verify that. Uh, we will check if we are connected to the, in to the internet. So we will ping archlinux.org. We can see we are connecting, so control C to cancel that. Now we're going to update the system clock. So we're gonna do time date CTL set dash NTP true and now we can check if it is correct through time date ctl status that tells the time there it is indeed correct 
So what we want to do now is partition our disks. Now, the Arch Wiki will tell you to use F disk. I am going to tell you to use something else. I'm going to tell you to use uh, a utility called CF disk, which I think is a little bit easier to use, especially for if you're new to this stuff. We're going to select a DOS partition table. We're going to create two partitions, one of them to be our boot partition and the other one to be our root partition. Now, so we're going to click new here. We are going to allot this one, I think one gigabyte of storage, more than 512 megs is preferable. So one gigabyte and then primary partition. We are then going to create, we're now going to create another partition and this one will take up the remainder amount of space on our disk and this one will also be a primary. Now we will navigate to SDA1 which is our boot partition and we will select type and then we will make it a swap partition. That's everything we need to do here so we can navigate to right with the arrow key, type in yes to confirm and now we will quit. So that is our partitions done. Pretty easy. That was one of the hardest things I it took to get around my head. Um, but as you can see, it is really not that difficult. We will now create an AXT4 file system on the root partition, which is SDA2 on my system. You can check through LSBLK to see what your partition names are. So our, our boot partition is, of course, uh, the 1 gig one which is SDA1 and our root partition is 19 gigs which is SDA2 that's where our home directory is going to be based so we will do mkfs.extext4 slash dev slash SDA2 for our root partition there we go and now we will initialize our swap partition with make swap slash dev slash sda1 which is our obviously our, our swap partition now we are going to mount the file system through mount slash dev slash sda2 and then our mount position which is slash mnt and we will now enable our swap volume as the wiki says with swap on slash dev slash sda1 now we will install some essential packages with packstrap slash mnt to uh, slash mnt is the location we want to install the programs that we're just going to enter next and packstream packstrap is the tool we're going to use so we're going to install base linux linux firmware and that will be it for now We will need to install more programs later, but um, right now this should be fine. Now my install took around three and a half minutes to install the uh, the programs, um, but they won't be the only programs we're going to be installing. They're just the, they're just the ones we need for now. Uh, it took around three and a half minutes for me. It will differ depending on how good your internet connection is, but it shouldn't take too long. Mine did freeze for a little minute, which had me a little bit worried, but everything seems to be all right so just be patient with that um, so now what we're going to be doing is we will be generating our f stab uh, so we'll do gen f s t a b dash capital u slash mount for the place you want to generate it two crocodile faces uh, slash mnt slash etc slash f stab now i've already generated this because my recording went dodgy, but uh, you just enter this command and it will generate it for you. Nothing to worry about there. Now we are going to chiru into the system. Now the way you chiru into the system is arch dash chiru slash mnt. As you can see, I'm already chiruted in, but that is how you go in. That's how you chiru into your arch install. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set our time zone. So we're going to do ln dash sf slash usr slash share slash zone info. And I already know mine, which is capital E Europe slash capital L London. 
This is capital sensitive, so make sure you put your capitals slash etc slash local time. Now, if you do want to, if you're, if you do not use the London time zone, which is probably most of you, uh, the command to list all of the different time zones is as follows: uh, time date ctl list dash time zones, and that will give you a list of all the available time zones. Select the one that's appropriate for you, and you're good to go. So now what we can do is run hw clock dash dash sys tohc, and this will generate the etc slash adjust time directory. Now what we need to do is edit the localization file. Now, uh, we currently don't have an editor to do this so what we're going to do is we're going to enter pack man because we are now inside the arch install dash capital s and we're going to install a few packages that we're going to need in the future so the first one's going to be vim which is going to be our text editor of choice you can install nano too but vim i think is a bit more of a professional text editor the next one we'll be installing is Network Manager. So we have internet connectivity in the install once we've finished. We are going to be installing sudo, which is going to be our privilege manager for, for our user account. If you choose to create one, which is a very good idea. And we are also going to be installing grub, which is going to be our boot manager. Yes, and yes. And now we wait for these to finish. Like I say, this will depend on your internet connection, but it shouldn't take too long. Okay, that took about 40 seconds for me, that was pretty nice. So, now what we're going to do is we are going to edit the local.gen file. Now, first of all, we need to generate this file by running local-gen. This will generate the locals, and now what we can do is edit it by typing in our text editor, in this case vim, and then the directory path, so slash etc slash locale dot gen. Now what we can do is navigate all the way down to find our language. So we're going to be looking for en underscore us. And for any other language, obviously, you'd track it down and uncomment it. So the way you uncomment is pressing I to insert, uh, if you're using Vim. Uh, and we want our en underscore us dot utf dash 8, not the ISO, because we will be leaving the ISO when we finish the install. So we will go right, 1, and backspace. Now, this one is uncommented, which means it is the only one that's going to be used. So... To quit, we press escape, shift, colon, right, and quit, W, Q. Now, now that's done, uh, we can now create our locale.conf, our configure file, uh, with vim slash etc, etc slash locale.conf. This is going to be a blank file because we've just generated it and we need to enter the following L A N G Lang equals E N underscore U S dot U T F dash eight. That is going to be our comp file. So shift colon right quit. Clear that. So now we are going to create our host name file for our network configuration. And we're going to do this by typing in vim space slash etc slash hostname. And now we're going to insert and we're going to type in our host name. So mine is going to be Archbox. I recommend you keep it pretty simple. Um, but Archbox seems pretty good. You can name whatever you want though. Just make sure you remember it. And what we're going to do now is we are going to veer off the installation guide and we're going to finish our network connection. Otherwise, we won't be able to connect to the internet. I have had this issue before through not doing it. 
So we're going to need to vim into hosts. And we have uh, some details up here. And we're going to navigate our way down a little bit. Go into insert. Take away this. And now we're going to do 127 docs. 0.0.1 tab over by pressing tab local host we are then going to do colon colon one tab tab local host we are then going to enter again 127 dot zero dot one dot one tab and because this is going to be a permanent IP address, what we can do here is type in our host name, which is archbox.localdomain, and then we're going to tab again, and then type in our host name again, which is archbox. Now make sure you've spelled everything correctly, and make sure your host name is indeed correct. So then we can escape, colon, right, quit. Clear that. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set a root password. This is going to be the password for the root account, which is not something you should log into all the time. Um, but we'll go through that once creating a user account. So make the password whatever you want. Make sure it's secure uh, if you're going to be using this. But this is a virtual box, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, and now what we're going to do is configure our bootloader. Now we've already installed grub through our pacman command previously, so what we need to do now is type in grub dash install dash dash target equals i386 dash pc slash dev slash sda. Now we don't need to specify which partition, we just need to specify the drive, which is sda. We will then enter installation finished and now what we're going to do is we are going to create a user account this is a good idea if you're going to be using this archbox for any amount of time as using the root user account for anything is like being in administrator is like having administrative privileges all the time yeah it's all right and you'll get things done a bit faster but one wrong click and you could screw up your entire system. I liken it to working on live wires, you know. You can do it a hell of a lot quicker. But is it going to end well for you? Probably not. So, the command to add a user is user add dash m. And then we're going to dash m. And then you're going to name your user account. So, I'm going to call mine Joseph. We are then going to set a password for the Joseph account. So we enter passwd and then the name of the account. And then we are going to enter our password. It can be the same as the root account password, but obviously that's not as secure. Now we've created the user account, but it currently doesn't have any privileges to do anything. So it will be kind of useless. So what we're going to want to do is add it to the wheel group, which is a user privilege group that was installed with the sudo package that we installed with our pacman command earlier. So to do this we're going to be doing the command user mod space dash a capital G space wheel and then we're going to enter the username of the user account that we want to add to the user group. So Joseph once again. Now, we need to edit the wheel group as we haven't edited it yet. So, we are going to type in editor equals vim because we need a editor to edit it with. You can enter nano or whatever else you want, but vim is the one we have installed. And then we are going to type in vi sudo. So, now we are here. We need to navigate all the way down to here uncomment to allow all members of the group of wheel to execute any command that's what we want so we are going to press i for insert go right twice and uncomment that command 
That is the only thing we need to uncomment right now. And uncommenting anything else can damage your system. Um, people will recommend new users to use Nano to edit uh, files like this, as it is less volatile and you have a less, a less likely chance of screwing up your system. But if you know what you're doing and you don't go adventuring too much, just editing this one file in Vim is fine. Now, one thing I did forget to do with the, with the Grub install, but it doesn't matter, we can do it now, is we need to set the configuration file. So, the command to do this is grub-mkconfig, make config, space, dash, o, space, slash, boot, slash, grub, slash, grub, dot, cfg generating the, the config file and now if it hasn't found the Linux image or the init RD image there is something wrong with your ISO um, but if you've just installed it from the Arch website then it, it should be fine I did have an issue with this when I had a Arch Linux ISO that I torrented um, I'm not sure if you've watched my previous video on that but I had a strange issue where if I entered certain commands my system would lock up now, I wasn't too sure what was causing this, but I'm fairly sure it was something to do with the ISO. But I've reinstalled it since, and I haven't had the issue since. Touch wood. Uh, I reinstalled the ISO through a direct download from a UK mirror. So, uh, if you do have issues with your ISO, maybe install it uh, a different way. Okay, it turns out I made a little mistake in the Arch install. Not, not a mistake, but I missed out on one command. So I'm going to probably just uh, put this little bit of the video in where it should be. Um, but we've installed the network manager package through our pacman command. Um, but we need to actually tell the system to boot it up on startup. Otherwise, we won't be able to connect to the internet. So what we need to do is we need to enter this command. System CTL enable space capital N network capital M manager no spaces now we've created some things and our system should boot up network manager on startup so with all that said and done we should have everything we need for a fully functional arch system so what we can do now is exit our root sorry exit our cheroot environment by typing in exit and now what we need to do is unmount all of our partitions like we have like we, like we did before we mounted our uh, partition so we could chiru into it now we need to unmount it so we do that by tapping u mount dash capital r space slash mnt so we've unmounted our slash mnt and we should be ready to go so we can tap in reboot and it should work, fingers crossed. So, uh, Grub is configured correctly. We press enter on the Arch Linux. And now we've got our Arch box login. So, we are going to log in with our user account, which is Joseph. You can always log into your root account if you did forget to create a user account or it went a little bit wrong uh, with just uh, root uh, as the login name and then obviously your um, your root password. So we have just logged into our Arch Linux environment. Now we must do one thing that everybody does when you have a fresh Arch install. Pacman dash s neo fetch. That's right. We are not root, so we need to type in sudo pacman dash s neo fetch so we need to enter our password because we are now using sudo press enter and there we go you may notice my voice is a little different from the beginning of this boot up that's because i forgot to enable network manager in the system ctl but i'll make sure to put that in the video before you get to this point so now the moment of truth, 
the moment of truth, the moment you've all been waiting for, the moment every single person watching this video has never done before, and have always wanted to do. I don't know why that came up 50 times, but there you go. Neo Fetch, Arch Linux, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that what you live for? Isn't that just what you live for? Now you can screenshot it, video it, picture it, do whatever you want. Throw it all over r slash Arch Linux, r, r slash Linux, r whatever. How many subreddits there are nowadays dedicated around Arch Linux? You put it on Unix, Unix porn, you know. Um, fancy it up a little bit, throw a bit of sparkle on that. Anyway, enough about that. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, I hope you use this video as a as a guide to installing your very own Arch Linux system, and I hope you can catapult yourself from this video to do greater and greater things with Arch Linux. Uh, I will make a video in the future about what you can do now you have an Arch Linux install. Obviously, you don't want to just be stuck with a TTY, do you? So I might do that in the future, maybe install a, a desktop environment, XFCE, KDE, Cinnamon, GNOME, there's so many different desktop environments you can use. You can use window managers, um, I do have a video explaining the difference between those two if you want to check that out. But um, yeah, I really do hope you found this video useful. If you did, you could like the video if you really wanted to, and you could even subscribe. Uh, I do have a couple of videos like this on my channel, um, and I will only be doing more and more of them. So thank you very much for watching. I Again, I hope you found this useful. Um, I do recommend Mental Outlaws Arch Linux installation guide as well as DistroTube's uh, Arch Linux installation guide. Um, they're both very, very good and they both also have Gen 2 installation Linux guides, uh, which is pretty damn interesting if you want to check that out. Um, but yes, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very, very much for watching to the end if you made it this far. My god. Um, have a very, very good day. Um, brush teeth at night, eat healthily, don't eat too much processed sugars, all in moderation, don't smoke. Um, yeah, good stuff. I hope you enjoy your new Arch Linux install. Have a good day, everyone. Drink water, do exercise, and I will see you in the next video.